morning, guys. So, I'm starting to think <clears throat> nighttime is just not my my time. Um, so it was going. Everything was going really good last night. I was unhooked. I got a nice hot shower. Dinner was delicious. So I was like, okay, things are going pretty good. It's as good as I can in the hospital, anyway. And then around like 9:30, when I went to go get hooked up. Um, when she flushed my IV, it hurt, like, really bad. Like, lightning shooting pain. And she was like, oh, I'm just, sometimes just because it hasn't been used in a while, I can do that. So I'll hook this up and we'll see how it feels. And she hooked it up and at first it was okay. But then it was, like, hurting again. And, um, and then she's like, well, we can try to place a new one. Um, because it was also, like, leaking around the IV site. Without going into too much detail, anyway. <laughs> um... Um, it started leaking when the fluids were going through around it. And so she was like, alright, we'll place a new one. And the first two tries failed, which is pretty typical because I have terrible veins. And so then they called somebody down from the ER that had an ultrasound machine to place it. And he got it. But it took a fair amount of him digging around to try to get the stupid vein to stay still. So... That really hurt a lot. Um, now, everybody was super nice, and the ER guy was awesome. He was, like, cracking jokes and stuff while he was doing it, but it, you know, you could be as nice as anything and digging around with an IV needle. It's not going to feel good. So, um, so I got stabbed three times last night trying to get a new IV in. I don't know why that one stopped, you know, working to an extent. It was hurting, and it was leaking. It was technically working, but... Um, they wanted a new one. I don't know why that one stopped. I've been fine since Saturday. The only thing I can think of is because it was super close to my elbow, so I kept bending my arm up and down. But, yeah, that was my thing. So, not, not a very fun night. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have just been like, everything's going great. But, this morning, um, I'm actually not very hungry. I don't know why. I kind of just want to sleep, but waiting on the doctors to see if I can possibly go home today. Um, Charles came last night and I was like, it'd be awesome if I could go home today. It'd also be just my luck that my IV would stop working right beforehand. But, um, so possibly see if I can go home today and uh, I guess go from there. So I'll see you guys in a little while. <coughs> You're just going to have to excuse my hair. I've tried now to fix it multiple times and it's not working. So <coughs> I guess you can color me a bit confused because um, the infectious disease doctor came in and he's like, when do you, um, have you heard anything about getting out of here? I was like, no, I was wondering that myself. And cause it's already been longer than the ER said actually was like one or two days. So, um, and then the, uh, hang on, it's singing the song of its people. Anyway, so then the other doctor came in and he's like, it's up to the infectious disease doctor when you can leave. So, I'm a bit confused. Just a bit. I guess we'll see. Isn't that a beautiful sound? Okay, I'll call it now. Hey guys, so I'm just kind of laying here and biding time. Um, but I thought I'd talk a little bit about what, what keeps me positive to a certain extent when I get stuck in a not so great health loop like I have been, um, this year. And I say to a certain extent because it's not like I'm happy-go-lucky all the time. Like last night I was really frustrated after we had the issue with the, um, IV, but you know, you can't stay stuck in that loop, or it's just gonna, like, drive you insane. So, what I do is, like, when I'm stuck here, I think about, when I'm stuck in the hospital, I think about that moment when I'm gonna get home, I'm gonna see Panda, I'm gonna see Yachty running at me, and I'm gonna be able to go sit out by the lake and watch the water, and, um, I think about the stuff I have looking forward to, I'm, I, I'm, making another trip to Arkansas at the end of this month. I think about um, 
feeling good again, like knowing that I'm in the right place that I need to be at right now, even though I don't want to be at. And I think that's kind of the whole, the real thing really with the consensus of on Saturday, I didn't want to go to the ER. I didn't want to get admitted. I didn't expect to get admitted, um, you know, and every consecutive day after that, it's not like I want to be here. It's not like I'm, oh, yay. It's just, I know I need to be here doing the things I need to do so I can do the things I want to do because um, I want to run. I want to train for my 5K coming up in April. Um, I want to walk panda. I want to swim. I want to go to the zoo. I want to go to the beach. None of that I can really do if I'm <coughs> running a fever and coughing my brains out because I have pneumonia. So that's kind of the mindset I look at it with. And that's not to say, like I said, I don't get frustrated because I do. And today I'm kind of like, so do I get to go home or not? Um, but it's it's that, that balance you learn with CS that sometimes it's just going to suck for a bit. And then it'll get better. So <clears throat> that's kind of how I'm viewing 2020 so far. Because it's, um, I mean, I've had some really good things happen this year. But on the whole, it's been one health challenge after another. Um, you know, I started out, well, I got sick at the end of December. And I started antibiotics on January 2nd, oral antibiotics. Finished them the 12th, because they were for 10 days. And then landed in the hospital February 1st. <clears throat> so it's just been kind of like, and I was sick for a week before, not a week, I guess, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like four days before that. So it's not been a very good year health-wise so far. And then, you know, obviously at CF Clinic, I had a 10% drop in lung function. But, you know, it's nothing that I can't fix, you know. I plan to run. I plan to make that lung function go back up if there's any way possible to. And uh, making this pneumonia go away right now by doing what I got to do. So, it's kind of how I look at it. It's kind of how I stay positive. Because it can get sitting in a hospital room, staring at the same four walls, and really having nothing to do but think unless you're on your phone and you can only watch I love YouTube don't get me wrong and I love Hulu and Disney Plus but you can just only watch so much before you want to do something else and um yeah but you do it anyway because you gotta so it's uh it's how I stay positive when I'm here I think about the good things that are coming up and I think about that I'm doing what I need to do so I can do those good things so if you guys are having a bit of a challenging year, then hopefully it'll get a little bit better. Um, 2020 is just seen kind of in your face um, for me, but, um, but you know, when you hit rock bottom, there's only one way to go, right? So you guys can do it too. And you just always have to look for that little, little positive, whatever it may be, the smallest little thing. Um, you can look for it and it can hopefully make the day a little bit better. So. Hey guys, so I just got taken down for an x-ray. I assume to see if like it looks better, but it's a little confusing because when I was in the ER, the x-ray actually looked okay. They found the pneumonia with the CT scan, so I don't know. But they'll probably just compare it to the last one and see if it looks the exact same or anything like that. So at least I gotta get out of my room. A little field trip. <laughs> Hospital field trip. Um, <coughs> I've been in this room since uh, Sunday. Well, yeah, Sunday. I, I got up here Saturday, but I changed rooms on Sunday. So, literally have not stepped outside of this room since Sunday morning. So, it's nice to get a change of scenery. Hey guys, I'm going to go ahead and end today's vlog. My dad is on his way up here with the coffee. The hospital coffee here is not great, and so he's been bringing me coffee every day, and it's been very nice. Um, but I am going to end the vlog so I can have it uploaded by the time he gets here. Or... He might actually be here before it gets uploaded because we're like three minutes. We live like three minutes from this hospital. But um, so definitely not getting out today and more than likely not getting out tomorrow either. It looks like my nurse said the earliest would be Thursday, which is kind of sucky because that's going to be almost a week. I went into the ER uh, Saturday, very early Saturday afternoon, like 1230. And uh, we'll just have to see how it plays out. But I know that I am feeling so much better already. 
um, in a short period of time because my heart rate's back down into the 80s and 90s. It was like 100s and 130s, which is not very healthy. Um, my O2 is running back at 97 to 99, and it was running um, 93, 94. I have my appetite back. I want to eat. And today, the marked improvement, I, those were all kind of happening within the past couple of days, but today, the marked improvement I see is I have my energy back. Like, even yesterday, I was still exhausted. Just playing one game of Phase 10 left me kind of wiped out, and I just fell asleep. But today, I've been down for an x-ray. I've, um, I got up and actually went to, like, open the blinds on the window, and um, I was moving around the stuff in my bed. And even though I had a very late night last night because of the stupid IV problems, um, I have energy. And it's amazing to have energy again. It's so nice. So, um looking at possibly two more days here, or I guess one more in a day and a half, I don't know. But um, just gonna keep trucking on, and uh, I will get out of here eventually, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so with that, thank you guys so much for coming along on my day today, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good night.